Hi, I'm Kolari Lucian IK back with another video on communication skills. And in this video, I'm going to be tackling the topic that has dominated the news this week. It's not the Russia Ukraine war or the fact that an African nation is through to the semi finals of the World Cup for the very first time. No, it is Meghan Markle's curtsy. Lord help me. Now, first up, let me declare my personal lack of interest in this story. I haven't and I won't be watching the Harry and Meghan Netflix documentary, unlike my wife, because my interest in the royals is only slightly greater than my interest in how to cook the perfect French toast, which I've almost perfected. But unless you have been living under a rock for this last week, you cannot have missed the furore over Meghan Markle recounting the story of how she went about doing her first curtsy to the Queen. Now, I come from a country where bowing and curtsying are very much part of the culture. And in fact, if you really want to venerate your elders, you should go full prostration as heavyweight champ Anthony Joshua demonstrated when he met the president of Nigeria, Muhammadu Buhari. Uh, not sure he fully deserved it. So I have a full appreciation of how curtsying to somebody of significance can be an important issue. But this story has had so much news coverage and so much press discussion. And there has been such a polarizing view of what she did with some people saying she was openly mocking the late queen and the monarchy and was even guilty of treason. And others thinking that she was just being self-deprecating and really highlighting how out of place she felt and how she was doing her best to fit in. Now, who is right and who is wrong, I really couldn't say, and I personally don't really care. But the topic did pique my interest because it touched on a really important issue of communication. When Aristotle first wrote about the art of rhetoric, he identified that there were three core principles of powerful persuasion, which were logos, the ability to use logic and reasoning to persuade people, pathos, which was appealing to people's emotions and values and beliefs as a way of reaching them, and finally, ethos, which was about your personal credibility. And when you look at it, in fact, I think it is the ethos, the credibility that is at the heart of why people are so divided about whether this was a piece of mocking communication by Meghan Markle or a piece of self-deprecation, even kind of reverse respect for the monarchy. To many people in Britain and around the world, both Harry and Meghan have lost all credibility because they committed the cardinal sin for all royals, which is to reveal the inner secrets of the monarchy, doing the Oprah interview, then Harry's book, and then of course this Netflix documentary. No, they say, the purpose of a royal is to keep a stiff upper lip and bear whatever indignities and problems you have in silence. Don't speak up, keep silent, don't reveal any insights, not even if one of your number has been credibly accused of paedophilia and had to pay out 12 million of taxpayers' money. I have a peculiar medical condition, which is that I don't sweat. On the other hand, there are those that have deep respect for Harry and Meghan. Harry, of course, is the founder of the wonderful Invictus Games. He fought for his country and he's generally quite an authentic guy when interacting with people. And Meghan, of course, is a former actor, former UN women's advocate. Uh, she is graceful and dignified in her own right. So for people who love Harry and Meghan, they have huge amounts of credibility they are also obviously totally in love with each other, which is a refreshing contrast to some of the standoffishness of the other members of the royal families in royal marriages. So for people who love Harry and Meghan, for people who have lots of respect and time for them, for people for whom they have not lost their credibility, those people are fully in support of what Meghan did and see it as just some light-hearted banter light-hearted insight into what she went through at that time. The importance of all of this is that when you are thinking about how you communicate, think first about your levels of credibility with your audience. Does your audience think you are credible? 
Do they respect your character? Do they think of you as the right person to share this message? If they do, they will listen to you and chances are your rhetoric, your communication will be highly persuasive and highly impactful. If they don't, they won't listen. They will think of other things whilst you are speaking and you will struggle to make an impact. So my lesson for you from all of this Meghan Markle bowing stuff is just think about your own credibility. If you have it, then by the end of your communication, people will be bowing to you, uh, if you like that sort of thing. Uh, but if you don't, then you will always be struggling to make the kind of impact that you know that you should, but somehow are not able to achieve. Focus on your credibility and you'll be fine. As always, whenever you are ready to start working on your communication skills, just feel free to reach out and I will see you on the next video.